Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Initially inspired by Lead Belly, the Beatles, Bartok, Coltrane, and his church organist father, David Cross became an uh, irrepressible improviser and experimenter. Uh, his subsequent immersion in rock music introduced him to a new vast pool of expressive possibilities. Currently, he plays a half fretted via electric, electric violin with five strings and an octave drop pedal, giving him a pitch range from the bottom of the cello to the top of the violin. David Cross was a member of King Crimson during the 1970s and continues to have a loyal fan base. He's best known for playing violin on the albums Lark's Tongues in Aspect and Starless and Bible Black. The musicians featured on his new album, Ice Blue Silver Sky, include Ginny and Wild, Mick Paul, Steve Roberts, and a special guest appearance on two tracks, by David Jackson of Vandergraaff Generator. This new studio album features new tracks along with new recordings of the two classic King Crimson tracks, Exiles and Starless. The album title refers to a lyric in Starless and King Crimson lyricist Richard Palmer James contributes to the lyrics on the album. Please welcome English electric violinist and keyboardist best known for playing with progressive rock band King Crimson from 1972 through 74. David Cross to interviewing the legends. Hello, David. Hello, Ray. Nice, nice, nice to see you. How well, the you? last time we chatted, um, yes. it was a October Marigold with uh, a Andrew Keeling. So it's been a while, but uh I love this new album. I've got to say, man, I think I think it's one of my favorite albums by you. As, as a matter of fact, that's great. I um, it's too close to me to know whether it's my favorite yet or not. <laughs> <laughs> too, too recent. I'll tell you in five years' time. In five Fingers years. <laughs> well, Ice Blue Silver Sky um, is yeah. is incredible. I think uh, I was it Bill Bruford that uh, dubbed. The good ship Crimson <laughs> is what he said about it. Um, you, you know, all your music's incredible. It really is. Um, it, I don't know. Th this one especially, it starts off with Nurse Insane. Uh, I got to ask you about that title because my wife's a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, actually, this is quite an old track of ours. It's written by uh, um, somebody called uh, John Dillon. And right. uh, um, it kind of speaks for itself. I, I don't know. It's kind of all about um, uh, frustration, um, uh, kind of madness. Um, I haven't got the lyrics in front of me. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's a kind of it's a favorite track of ours from from stage, and and part of what I was trying to do with this album, this is a studio album, but I, what I wanted to do was kind of take a, sh a snapshot of what the band at that time was doing on stage, and then really kind of examine it, um, because we hadn't heard before, we haven't heard this song uh, by Ginny and Wild. Ginny and Wild has an extraordinary range, and is an amazing singer. Uh, and the previous recording of this track, you know, was done by the, the John Dillon, who, who who wrote it, wrote most of it. And um, it was it, it really important to me to try and see what difference the pe particular people made to everything and anything. So it's all about it's all about the people, and that's that that was the journey that I went on with this album was trying to see what how what the importance of the actual musicians was in creating the music um you know and i got got some surprising answers really jimmy is incredible by the way you know i, I really love his vocals yes yeah. he is, he is quite amazing very uh um he, he's one of those people who just gets better and better you know the older they get he's kind of um uh you know i, I came across him originally when we we were looking for singers for the david cross band and we did mm -hmm. um 
blind auditions. So people did, were not allowed to send in any information about themselves or what they'd done, and they just had to send in um, recordings, you know, probably cassette recordings at that time in you know, 2000 or something. And um, we, we, we had two singers who came through, there was Ginian Wilde and there was Jonathan Casey, who was mm. for some reason going under the name of Arch Stanton at the time. So we, you know, we've worked with both of those. And this is, um, this, uh, this album really gives Ginian a chance to, to shine. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a kind of beacon mm. all the way through this. I mean, I, 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 uh, he's put everything into this, you know, his, his heart and soul is really right on the table here. And, uh, you know, I can't do it. <laughs> I have to stand alongside him. <laughs> um, it's kind of total exposure and, and he's great. You know, he, he, he's put everything there and in the Crimson stuff and in our own material. And Nurse Insane is just, you know, one of those tracks that he's, that he's taken to his heart. Uh, don't ask me what the, what the words mean. <laughs> any of these albums um, the um the guitars are also yeah, awesome I know, the, I know the feeling of the track that's all i can tell you <laughs> well that's the most important thing anyway isn't it <laughs> well, I think maybe it is i think that's kind of what emerged really that um both lyrics and 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 the things that people say mm -hmm. are not as important as what's going on underneath yeah uh, you know, and w with that nurse insane thing, they kind of match. There's a kind of terrible anger in that in that song. Um, it's kind of you know, like like I think everything on the album, it's about relationships, right? Uh, and communication, frustration, and um, you know, all of those things that keep our lives ticking over. I, I like how you added the voices. You know, like in the yeah. beginning. Of the track, it reminded me of Dark Side of the Moon, how they did it, you know. Yes, I, somebody else who was somebody else was suggesting to me. I haven't heard that yet. This is mm -hmm. you're talking about the the new version. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard that yet. Huh. Um, you know, great minds think alike. Um, you know, but this was recorded sort of, um, you know, around the uh, in the beginning of COVID time. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe everybody was driven to doing things in the studio more. I don't know. But it, it was um, it goes back a long time with me. I've, I've always been interested in um, the kind of music part of speaking. Mm -hmm. I found that fascinating, and uh, so I wanted to see if you if you put actual speaking, if you got this group of people together talking together. So we have all the musicians, you know, as part of making this album, we we got into a room and we got into a studio, in fact, and recorded ourselves all talking together. And the kind of bits of our life histories that we were sharing, and and then start, I started to bring out the things that seemed important about each each about the character of each person, you know, right? What um, what seemed to kind of put across something quite deep about that person, um, you know. So uh, I like purple was Steve Roberts. I don't know why he likes purple, but <laughs> something about the Dunderia. You know, it's a kind of, it's a kind of message in there, just in the music of that, you know. And he's uh, somehow that kind of reflects his his fluidity. He's a very kind of fluid drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I like purple. I like purple. It's just kind of, it's just something that just floats out of him. Mm -hmm. you know, God knows why he likes purple or why it was important <laughs> at the time, but. You know, it, that is that is who he is. It's like it just floats a color onto. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like the words. I, I mean, I, I I'm too close to this to evaluate it now, but it's. Um, it, but you know, certainly, it's. I just try to dig into what, what the things people say, mm -hmm. reveal about them. You know, and, and, and I'm not listening so much to the words. Actually, I'm listening more to the sound. Right. More right. To the, the noise that the words and the people make, you know. Yeah, I, as a writer, I of course I love the the words, you know. Yes. Yeah. But uh, it, sometimes it's hard to find those words on the internet, you know, because we don't have albums anymore. You know, the cover usually, yeah. you know, the, those albums used used to have the words and liner notes and all that stuff. But yeah. and I miss those days. <laughs> yes, yes, I do too. Yeah. yeah. 
no, you you felt you were getting a glimpse into, um, you know, into, into the whole world behind it. Sure, and there, exactly. There is, there is a big world, you know, behind the creation of any, you know, any uh, any album or any mm -hmm. piece. Of, yeah, yeah. No, That's I, what I, I try to do now, you know, and dive yeah. deep in. Yeah, get I it all out of, out of you from the creator, you know, basically. Yeah, yeah I agree. The tracks, um, I'm going to go down some of the tracks on the album. Of course, Calamity uh, yeah. kind of starts with a reggae feel. <clears throat> and then later on, I kind of hear an Arabic uh, electric violin kind of yeah. solo, you know, which yeah, is really I cool. I love the way that changes like that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of, um, uh, you know, it's to do just really with the music that's around, isn't it? I, You know, I... I don't think any of us live in a, a world where we don't hear what's going on on the other side of the world. Sure. Um, you know, that's, that's just the world that we live in now. And we kind of take a bit from here. We take a bit from yep. there, you know, and, uh, and that's what comes back to you, I think. Yeah. Nowhere. Um, the lyrics, I love the lyrics without you, I'm going nowhere, which is a great line. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I really like that. This started as a, an instrumental with, um, mm -hmm. David Jackson and I did on an, uh, an album called Another Day. And actually, we did get some uh, lyrics written for that, which we, we never used. Um, we didn't get as far as using mm -hmm. <laughs> which, uh, by by Judge Smith. And they were um, they were kind of meant to be all about kind of um, Vladimir and Estragon from Waiting for Godot. It was those kind of characters that David and I were identifying with. You know, we started doing shows with bowler hats on, like the characters and that. And we, and we had a put a tree on the front of the album, which is a big kind of feature of the uh, of the of the stage play, Waiting for Godot. Um, and no, we're going. You know, going nowhere was kind of very much about that. And then there was that that little twist that came in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, without you. So it just looks like a kind of very negative, seems like a very negative song. And then, you know, as you get to the end, there's just this lovely little twist in it and you realize it's a love song. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It, we've, we, we did a lovely version <laughs> live, actually, David and I in Athens. You know, the only time we've got, I think, maybe once or twice we tried the words, we've got people singing along with it and it was mm -hmm. it was absolutely great you know it's kind of um i don't have much experience of sing along stuff but that was that was working really well yeah for us. i love it man and then but you know Ginian came in with the um yeah with this and, and, and it's again it's just beautiful, beautiful voice absolutely guess, yeah, yeah beautiful voice i think my favorite song on the album i think that i think the best song on the album is exiles um yeah. Gosh, it's incredible. It's like symphonic rock and then kind of a heavy rocker. Um, it's a great prog tr track. Uh, yeah. Awesome guitar. Talk about Exiles. Well, it's getting longer and longer and longer. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. It was kind of one of the first things. I mean, it's the first. It came out of a the little tune. Da, 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 da. Came out of... Um, you know, a session uh, when we first got together in Covent Garden with in 1972 with, um, you know, the original version of the King Crimson that I was in. Um, and uh, Bill Bruford was there, mm -hmm. Jamie Muir and Robert and myself, and, and John couldn't make it. He was, a, uh, you know, but he came in and, you know, turned it into a piece of art as well. Mm -hmm. They, he was fantastic. But, yeah, it's, it's something I've just always identified with. Um, I mean, all the way along, really. I mean, because Lance Tanks itself was a, a very, very weird uh, kind of thing. I mean, I never expected it to get anywhere. And I thought it was, um, I don't think anyway, but I thought it was <laughs> certainly very strange. And uh, I didn't think it was going to, you know, I think it was, uh, in a way, it was going to keep me in that kind of strange land, <laughs> yeah. you know, away, away from the, you know, the golden you know, target of, you know, fame and success and lots of people knowing who you were and things. And right. I thought, no, I'm never going to get there. Never <laughs> get there. <laughs> and so I kind of felt exile for ages. Actually, 
you know, in the end, it kind of came full circle. And, um, you know, I began to realize really only in the last decade, I, I guess, that there, that I am part of a community and I'm not mm -hmm. an ex. Well, I do have a community, which I guess is progressive rock, you know. Um, and, and, and now that I kind of have taken, have, have realized that, I'm, you know, I'm very happy. <laughs> not to be an ex -style anymore. <laughs> But you know, I still, um, you know, that 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 track still kind of, I think, speaks to to everybody who kind of feels alone in a strange land or a strange city. Yeah, yeah, we've done we've done more with it. There was, um, you know, we're actually playing Lark's Tongues at the moment, and and uh, you know, that's one of, one of the things we do is we do the, the our, our version of Exiles rather mm -hmm. than the new one. Um, because by now I prefer I prefer the version we're doing. <laughs> exactly, I love what you said though. You you you, you and I'm quoting you from somewhere from another interview or something. You said, "Exile." So it was it was an emotion that I have always related to because when I was growing up, I always felt I was a bit of an exile. Whatever company I was in, I was always in the wrong time and the wrong place. <laughs> Sounds like a yeah. Dr. Dr. John song. <laughs> I, it was, I guess it was, um, you know, I mean, when, when I was, you know, when I was growing up in, you know, sort of post-war mm -hmm. um, UK, it was, you know, there were, the regions were very powerful, you know, and, and my, my parents were from London actually, and then they'd moved down to the West country. Right. And uh, everybody down there talked like this all the time. They had a very seemed to have a very strange accent to me. Huh. Um, but I, I didn't. I talked. I was quite posh, really, compared because I was. I was from my parents from London, so I didn't really fit, you know, with that kind of um, groups. And, and, and so it kind of started early on, you know. I, I thought I, you know, this thing of wondering, you know, why was I, why was I here? It didn't. I, why didn't I sound like everybody else here? And uh, so I've always had the doubts about <laughs> about where I've come from. That's you funny. Know, some people think they're from Mars, don't they? And I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never. Uh, my imagination never got me that far, but I, I did feel I was in the, I was in a very strange place for quite a while. Yeah. You know, no, England England's very interesting because of the accents. You know, yeah. they're so different. Yeah. You know, for us, it's not, not a big place either. You know, no, exactly. Because, you and know, then, if you talk to the Welsh, wow, talk about different. You yeah. know, yes, that's right. It's yeah, like there's, like there's a huge wall going down the side of Wales, isn't there? Well, there is one, of course, across Hadrian's Wall stops stops the um, Scot Scottish getting into getting into england and england getting into scot english getting into scotland exactly yeah you, know, you, know. you do have the the posh talk you know because if you talk to a uh uh somebody from liverpool of course it's you know totally different absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. i've yeah, got um i've got roger earl from fog hat coming up and right. i've interviewed him before i always tell him he sounds like michael kane because i think he's from that area yeah. You know, yeah, but it's very distinct. You can tell the Michael Caine, you know, kind of English talk. Well, he's kind of cocky, isn't he, Michael Caine? A little bit, yeah, he is. He is, but it's not real heavy like like the Beatles or anything, you know. No, no, that's right. Yeah, They're, I love it, man. That's why that's why the Brits are so popular in the U.S. because we love your that's accents. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, um, I remember that first time I went there. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about catchy t tunes, Karma Gain. That's a really catchy tune, you know. It's got yeah. like that seventies funky sound, you yeah. know, with those singers. You know, it's it's great. That I love that yeah. track. Inspired by the Bee Gees somewhere, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> I was, yeah, I love it. I mean, it's the kind of poppiest thing I've ever. I've yeah. Ever I like it. I think. I mean, you know, Jin's very, um, Jinian's very, he's, he's such a positive kind of person, you know. Right. He, 
and he can't can't help he can't help making positive music. You know, I try and drag him down as much as I can, but <laughs> to the depths of my despair and misery. But it's is impossible. You know, you let him let, give him half an inch. You know, he's turning <laughs> something, you know, he's turning misery into total happiness and joy. And uh, you know, Calm Again is a bit bit of that. I think it's got a lot of a lot of a lot of his joy in it. And it's a um, fun track. Fun. You know, great, great fun. I mean, I love doing that. I, you know, there's a, I love you know messing around with the voices. You know, the voices go down, 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 down. down. Exactly. Yeah. Up, 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 up and up again. <laughs> I, love, I love all that. You know, I, I, I don't see why it should just be, um, you know, be reserved for people having, you know, top ten hits. I think, I think we should all be allowed to play. Sure. Exactly. Voice. I agree. So yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that one too. It's great fun. Yeah. You know, Adrian Ballou, I had Adrian on the show not oh, yeah. really not long ago. He does fun stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I, he's got a real genius for for being, you know, being for positivity and strangeness. I just don't know how he does it. I'm very jealous, actually. I think, <laughs> I think he's, uh, he's just tuned in a slightly different universe. And I wish I could wish I could get hold of a bit of that. Yeah, no, he's great. Really like him. So I think you do the same thing with the violin as he does with the guitar, you yeah, know? Maybe, maybe. Well, that would be a nice thing. That would be a wonderful compliment. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe Great. that. Yeah. Last time we talked, this is funny, okay? Because we were kidding around, and you yeah. were saying, you're laughing about how many times you've played Starless. Yes. <laughs> and here it is again on your album. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I thought I'd left it behind, but it it came back for an encore. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know what it is about Starless, man. It, it's you, you want to listen to it over and over again. Uh, it's, it's hypnotizing. <laughs> it is. And it, you know, it still sends shivers down my spine. You know, as the, as it as it opens up. You know, it, you know, doing it on stage as it opens up, it's just absolutely lovely. You know, it's yeah. Just, you just like oh, you just sink into this wonderful, you know, deep pool, and and it just takes you somewhere else. It's fantastic. Um, you know, again, what I, I I couldn't resist it because there's so many kind of textual <laughs> things in there. There's so many voices. You know, when I start, I started going back to the um, to the original play, which is you know, Under Milk Wood by Dylan right. Thomas, and looking at the voices that were in that play. You know, and I and I started, you know, saying some of the words because they're all kind of, you know, it's this kind of idea of shipwreck that goes through this album as well, I mean, calamity. And then, if you think about the voices in in, in Under Milk Wood, there's there's the sea in the background, and then you start hearing these voices on the shore coming off the sea, and you know, it's uh, you know, it's calling out ghosts reflecting on their past and the mm -hmm. guilt they felt about life and right. And, and there's obviously been some terrible shipwreck off the shore and all these people have died and drowned, drowned at sea, you know. So it's a, there's this wonderful kind of dark background. I just couldn't resist it. I I, I thought we've got to use some, <laughs> you know, we pinch, if you're going to pinch the word starless from which comes from the, you know, the beginning of Under Miltwood, you know, you may as well pick, you may as well stick some of the rest of it in there as well. So we started lifting some of that and putting it in, and, and it just seemed to give a whole other dimension to what was going on. You know, and then we had some shipwreck noises from calamity, and we started putting some of them in as well. And before you knew it, you know, Starless was back again. You know, screaming <laughs> louder than ever before. <laughs> yeah, I, guilty, guilty. That's I funny, there, but I couldn't help it. And you got David yeah, Jackson on that. Again now, all right? It's all over yeah. now. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's going to come back again. <laughs> we'll see. We'll yeah. See. David Jackson's on saxophone, right? On that track? Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, he's on, no, he's not on uh, Star, Star He's on uh, uh, Calm Again. And okay. Going Nowhere. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. 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 Great player, by the way. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, going nowhere. He's got he's he's got the using the um, sopranino, which is like smaller than a soprano sax. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which is one of the loveliest things that he plays. It's it's a it just you know it makes me cry every time he you know he plays it. It's just um, it's just really so beautiful, you know. And he's it, it, somehow his heart just flies into it. 
It's great. And, and you know, when you get to that little twist, uh, you know, in, in nowhere, you know, he just he just adds adds the cream and the jam or whatever on it. It just makes it makes it a, you know really human experience. It's lovely, lovely. It's a great player. I love saxophone, and you know the violin is really turning up more, more and more nowadays. And, yeah, you know, I've learned it. Did all sorts of things. Yeah, you're talking about me or everybody? It, you mean there's more well, violin? Everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, hearing more and more yeah, violin. Yeah, 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 I can't take credit for all of that, can I? Yeah, I, yeah thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will try, don't worry, I will try. Um, no, it is, it's great, yeah, it's everywhere, and people are doing all sorts of things with it, yeah. Yep. And, then, and people are much more interested than they used to be. I mean, just in day-to-day -day conversations with people, people are kind of acknowledging electric violin, mm -hmm. the differences, uh, more than ever before. You know, they're finally kind of realizing, oh, actually, you, do, you know, you can do different things with it, can't you? And, and how many strings have you got? And I said, well, I've got five, but the man over there's got seven, you know, and the girl over there's playing eight of them. So, you know, they, it's getting, um, you know, it's getting completely out of control, really. But yeah, no, it's it's lovely. I mean, all sorts of, you know, new techniques, that, you know, you hear now and, and amazing players. I mean, just, you know, YouTube is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, you just you know there's just so many lovely things people are doing now um you know and they all they all astound me i mean mm -hmm. I just, how on earth do you do that you know how do you play so fast how do you play so high how do you mm -hmm. play so well? how do you make it sound like that you know and it's it's uh somehow it, i mean the violin is a very almost a, on its own if you just plan to just play a a single like open string without doing anything to it it's a very bland instrument right and you know I, and it may be because of that that people need to put so much of themselves into it um you know it's, it's just a very bare sound but you know with the bow with vibrato um you know you can really start to change that sound and make it much more kind of come from inside you I, I don't know why it is, but it it really is an expressive instrument. Yeah, it's great. I love the way you play, by the way. And, Thank you very much. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes it sounds like a you know like a lead guitar, you know. Yeah, yeah, it really I does. Mean, I, I, that was, in a way, that was a kind of bit of a mistake, wasn't it? Because people can't, because you can't tell the difference if right. you very clearly. Um, so that's that's kind of dog me in a way and that you know sometimes people don't realize it's a violin they think mm -hmm. it's a guitar i mean both both in recording and on stage you know if somebody else is mixing if we've got which we you know quite often do we have to just walk in and play and somebody else will put the sound together you know and i'll start a um you know you can see if you look at videos afterwards i'll start a uh you know a violin solo and suddenly the guitar's been turned way up loud you know <laughs> and all you're hearing is just chords strumming away you know? and then there's me doing this <laughs> you know nothing at all coming out oh god you know and sometimes the videos do that as well you know they 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 hone in on the guitarist when it's me playing over here right like so it's i mean it's what i set out to do deliberately i mean i was really trying to you know, see, see what, see if you could make it get that same kind of expressive qualities that you get from electric guitar, you know, from particularly from, you know, distortions and overloads and things. And, um, you know, and it kind of has worked for me in terms of being able to get, uh, make it expressive and have it, you know, an extension of my kind of, kind of what's inside me. But, um, you know, I don't think it was such a great career move. <laughs> I don't think I think it is hard for people to know that that it's a violin doing it. Why well, I I think the violinist today has become the star of the band. You know, like if you look at Kansas, you know, you know, bands like that. I mean, I could name a lot of bands that the, the violin is like the, the the main guy. I mean, you know, Daryl Way, Jean Luc, yeah. Jean Luc yeah. Ponty. You know, those guys have been on the show as well. Yeah. Those, you yeah, know. Yeah. I guess it has been for a while, really. Yeah, sense. but there's still some people really hate it. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why. That's they're not true music lovers. If if, yeah. if you say that, yeah, you know. People, I don't know. Some people just turn their backs on it. it just doesn't make sense. They just associate it with classical music, and 
What's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, just endlessly guess why. But anyway, huh. yeah, no, I, I think it, I think we're living in a violin-oriented world now. So I think so too. Me too. Good yeah. Place to, yeah. 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 Um, I got to ask you one thing about Starless. Um, is it true uh, Robert Fripp and, and Bruford didn't like the song and they declined to record it on the album when it first came out? No, I don't think I don't remember that. No, because that's on the internet. <laughs> uh, well, if it's on the internet, it must be... <laughs> uh, what was? Yeah. The, I don't remember any more details? But I don't remember that. It was, it was when we were putting the album together, was it? Yeah. Um, I don't remember that. It, it, huh. I mean, we were looking at a whole range of material because we'd um, we'd done a lot of live recording, and we were trying to, you know, work work up some of those ideas. Um, so I can't remember where we were with starless at that point um, <clears throat> I, I don't think i don't remember anybody mm. not liking it i mean they may they may have thought it was not ready or right the, the versions we had weren't weren't right yet or something like that but uh i don't think so far as not liking it i don't, mm. I don't remember that i don't remember any anybody not liking anything really <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly like so um seems it, a likely thing to me However, it also, it also said you initially wrote the you, you did the introductory theme. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, yeah. Da, yeah. I got that bit. Yeah. Okay, good. I think, I think I I think Robert kind of refined it into something that sounded better than what than what I was I, I just kept flaffing away at trying to do the beginning. It was it was all based on a um it was kind of there's the beginning of the there's a Max Brook violin concerto, which is mm -hmm. insane. Um, has a kind of figure that's that I was kind of in, inspired by, and I was trying to. It, what I liked about that was the way it kind of reached upwards, and I was trying to get that, you know, over the octave, and I was trying to get, trying to find a way of doing that comfortably, and uh, that's what I kept on playing with, um, you know, and that's what we got to in the end was you know, that tune because, you know, all the all the rest is lovely, but it's it's what, what's really nice about that. That whole song is the way that that little tune, and the you know the vocal melody, and the very kind of sinister, mm -hmm. 30, long slow build up, all kind of work together and you know reveal somehow different parts of this whatever this composite person was that was King Crimson at that time. Yeah, it definitely is a kind of a, a bit of everybody in there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, which is why why i think it's powerful um you know because that only happens whenever it doesn't happen when people don't like things yeah. <laughs> it only happens when people say yes you know, to each other yeah That's what, yes, yes it's such a wonderful band name isn't it but you yeah. know it's it, it's when you say yes to each other that's that's when you kind of open the door to extraordinary um juxtapositions extraordinary bringing together of different things yep you know, if you if you say, oh, I don't think that's rock music, or I don't, you know, that sounds a bit country to me. If you, you know, if you kind of put it, kind of keep things away, you know, nothing moves, nothing gets, nothing moves forward at all. It's only by saying yes, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to open my ears, and I'm going to listen to what you're actually doing and try and feel it. Um, you know, then then we can move forwards. I mean, I felt there's a I, 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 the other day I played with. Um, I was lucky enough to play with on stage with um, last week with Tony Tony Levin. Oh yeah, Stickman. Yep. Yeah, and we did a, a thing called Crimson Marathon where it was a David mm -hmm. Cross and Tuna with Marcus Reuter and Trey Gunn and mm -hmm. Stickman and the three bands. Stickman were the, the main band of the evening. And but we did uh, Starless as an <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a twenty first century schizoid man. With everybody on. Oh wow! Uh, sorry, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> sorry, my internal joke. It, it, you know, you never get enough time to. We, we had no rehearsals, right? So we did, you don't get. You know, you don't get any rehearsals. These right. Things, so. But you know, we we were trying to sound check it. So mm -hmm. so everybody had done their own sound checks, right? We'd done the last one, David Crossband, um, and then. 
then everybody came on and we and we started trying to sound check the this number with everybody on stage but but, but the pa wasn't turned on and everybody just had their monitors so i had in ear monitors and when we got so we decided with Starless that the DCB was going to do the beginning in the vocal section and then kind of the stick men team was going to take over, mm -hmm. Trey Gunn was going to take over the next section. So we, we played the first bit, that all sounded good, you know, and everything was fine. And then as we handed over, you know, they, all the other, everybody else started playing, but we couldn't hear anything. So we went, so we went completely silent. I mean, this is not public but this is in the sound check it went complete sight you know and there's Tony Lemon playing <laughs> and, away. and it's just like they're all by me that's funny absolutely <laughs> so when we got to the end of it, we kind of you know managed to bluff our way to the end of it the um you know I asked I asked Robert the who was doing the sound you know what, what about could we put something in the PA and he just looked at his watch and said no, you're gonna to have to imagine it. It'll be there tonight. <laughs> you gotta imagine it. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> that, that was it. That was the sound effect done. So he said he, you know, he, he had it under control. Oh if my we god! Right, and he got his bit right. It'll all be fine. But we never heard it until the actual evenings. <laughs> That's like, great. Was that wasn't the point. I was the point I was making <laughs> was that in this, I was lucky enough to stand next to Tony. Which, you know, which I've done a few times, um, but anyway, it, it, what I realised last time was just, you know, he's absolutely wonderful to be with on stage mm -hmm. because he's just kind of he's, something about him is incredibly generous. There's this sort of generous spirit there, and it's it, the way it manifests is that he just is in the moment all the time, you know. So you know, he, he, you know, when we were actually, you know, when we were actually playing, could hear something that was going on. <laughs> um it was just you could see in his eyes you know whenever i did anything you know he was aware of it you know he mm -hmm. knew i done something slightly different from what i might normally do or you know and you knew just he was listening to everything just right really, you know and if appropriate you know he would respond to something that somebody did but he's just such a live um you know ball of kind of love and energy on the stage yeah it's, you know, it's 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 a wonderful experience just to just to play with one. You know, wonder everybody wants to play with him. Yeah, it's, but it's you know, it's not just that he's a good player or anything like yep. that. Of course he is, but you know, it's just that it's that kind of being in the moment all the time, and and you know that you you can't you know that it, you've got to do it as well. You've got to be real. You've got to be in the moment. You've got to be doing you know the best that you can. You've got to be playing real music when he's around. You know, and that, that's, that's lovely. I can't remember why I started that story now. <laughs> I'm glad you did, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I shared it with you. I, I love I, Tony. Tony's a great guy. Yeah, you're right. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, a lot of guys that I interview, they want to show me something. You know, it, it goes like this. And so they'll pull their guitar out and oh. start playing on YouTube. And it's the same thing. I don't hear anything. It doesn't come through. You know, and I got to kind of whisper to them, I don't hear anything, <laughs> you know, and they just look kind of silly doing it, you know, and I, I got to edit that part out. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. yeah. So I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's great experience. <laughs> um, you've got uh, one of your band members are actually leaving or has left the band, right? Guitar player, uh, guitarist, singer, yeah, from the stage, the band yeah. stage at the moment, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, actually, he's the singer. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so what, just, what, the, what live, he... the live band I've got at the moment is different from the album because, right, Indian and when we got to the kind of the end of COVID and the live work started coming up again, Ginian and Steve hmm. didn't have uh, vaccination, so they weren't able to. Uh, to tour at the time, so I had to find other people to do. So that. Jonathan, so, Jonathan Casey, Jonathan right? Casey. So, um, what are you going to do about replacing him? I guess on the road. That's a, that's the secret. That is. Yeah. Okay. Is Ginian? <laughs> Maybe Ginian. That's a secret. Okay. <laughs> you win yeah. So so Ginian just plays on the albums, 
Um, yes, that's right. And he was on the road with us with, before the before COVID. Before. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that happens a lot, isn't it? I mean, you got different uh, different players on the album, different players on the road. Well, there's a yeah. kind of time delay, isn't there? I mean, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, maybe people used to do, you know, originally the kind of when you went and recorded an album and you were playing the stuff on stage. And then, you know, if you were lucky, EMI, EMI or somebody put you into a studio and you and you recorded what you were doing on stage, you know, you recorded the songs, uh, you know, then you put it out and that was your album and then you mm -hmm. toured. It's all the same people just moving around, but you know, there's there's a time delay in these things now, and there's you know backlog of stuff that builds up and things like that. So it doesn't always coordinate. Um, but I, I am I am conscious of that, and uh, yeah, it's important. To, I think that people who make the music do get a chance to promote it. Right. So we'll do the best to yeah to that happen at some point, but I'm not revealing anything. <laughs> <laughs> no all scoops your, here all today. Your guesses, all your guesses will be wrong anyway. <laughs> I've been very lucky to have a lot of members of um, King Crimson on the show. There, had, there are uh, a lot of members of King Crimson. Oh my God. I've had Greg Lake. I love Greg. Uh, I love Greg. Uh, Ian McDonald as well, who we also lost. You know, great guy. Um, Adrian, yes. Tony, Tony Levin as well. Um, I tried to get Robert Fripp, but he said he wasn't doing any interviews. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. He's a tough one, you know. But yeah. uh, I've been lucky, you know. I've been lucky to get you guys. I, I love, you know, I love the way King Crimson held it together all these years with different bands, you know, different lineups. Yeah. You know, yeah. which made it very interesting because you did hear, you know, a lot of different sounds coming from the band you know it wasn't the same all the time and i know i, I had an interesting chat with trey gunn about this because i i, I kind of missed the whole period of, of uh, crimson somehow when they were i don't know what the albums were but they were, basically it was improvised mm -hmm. stuff that when he was involved with them on stage and i didn't know about that i kind of hadn't realized that but it made my, it made a lot of sense to me when he was talking about it he was talking about doing live shows and recording them and then they were put out um but you know certainly i i mean the, you know from you know the last time i was here i was talking about october is marigold and kind mm -hmm. of that's uh, you know an almost entirely improvised uh you know sort of starting point for all of that stuff you know, and then I'm I'm here now with Eyes Blue Silver Sky, and it's you know these are basically crafted songs at the core of it, but they kind of leak across into each other. Those things, mm -hmm. but, it does. You know, I, I can't. I think there is a sort of tension between those things, and I suspect that Robert kind of. I, I don't know if you suffer from that tension or if you enjoy that tension, but <laughs> I expect he's going through a very similar thing. You know, I, I like the kind of free. I like the kind of freedom of free improvisation. Then yeah. oh no. It's not very organized people but you know you need, you need songs for people to relate to it. and so then we do something very structured and i think there's a kind of oscillation going on there is i just, I just try and do both things you know right um and, and you know and hope people just accept that i agree but, you you know, I think that's one thing for a while and then try something else for a while sure you know you, and that, it's fine you've done some great albums man i just want to mention some you know crossing Crossing Banks, Upshift, um, man, you had some great people on that, you know. Yeah, yes. um, Billy Sherwood, who I know, who gets involved with a lot of different projects. Uh, yeah. Oliver Wakeman was on yeah. that. Tony K. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, Tony lives around here. Really? Yeah, I live in in the Sarasota area, and he, yeah. I had him on the show. He lives close to me. <laughs> Is that on the west or is it on the north? West coast, west. yeah. West, yeah. Near yeah. Tampa, not too north far from Mexico. Tampa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a wonderful place! Oh, well, we got a lot of Brits here, man. <laughs> a lot of what? A lot of Brits. Oh, a lot of know? Brits. Oh, I'm sure yeah. You, yeah, you guys got your own pubs here and everything. Oh, great! I bet they sell Guinness. <laughs> you own the place. <laughs> <laughs> No, I loved. I had I had wonderful holidays in Florida. Mm -hmm. I had um, a girlfriend who was from Florida for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. We, um, used to go. We went. We went camping in the Everglades. You know that. that was oh, really? 
something very very made a noise like that came through in the middle of the night i don't know what it was but i wasn't getting out of my hammock i tell you <laughs> sounds like a uh a wild boar because we get a lot of those yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it was yeah yeah well i, I wasn't gonna find out i tell you <laughs> but, uh, no, that's a yeah. dangerous place water, yeah, box. Yeah. water boxes i remember some people used to talk about as being you know deadly snakes that you can get in the everglades you know we because we had we had a new i can't i told you this before we had a new um we went canoeing there and we had a new um we, we, the, the the what do you call it the ranger the guy who was taking us on the mm -hmm. you know on the, this adventure yeah uh, you know he was in a canoe and, and, and a number of people in canoes and he said oh well, you know we we'll walk to this hammock they call it you know the island we'll walk we'll walk to this one and uh some of the well, i don't know anyway so we you know paddled through the water to the end and got there you know and my girlfriend was looking very worried about all this and um you know and then we we carried on after that and but you know she said well you know we don't not usually we shouldn't paddle in the water here they got water moccasins there you know and it turned out that this ranger had only arrived from somewhere in the north of america the day before and didn't know about all that stuff so he didn't know how dangerous it was himself and he was jumping in the water and everybody was oh slowly. my god so that was a scary uh scary moment but, but it's a wonderful place you know yeah glass bottom canoes fantastic mm. anyway not really here to relate my holiday stories, but I do. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> wonderful now, country. I, I, Florida is just amazing. Well, now it's overrun by pythons. You know, we get, they, yeah. God, well, they, they don't. They're not native to to the states. They're not. Somebody dropped their pet there oh, a long no. time ago, and now we got a million of them. No. Yeah, and they're heading up north. <laughs> kind of where scary. From? I'm not sure where they're from. Gosh, that's scary stuff. Yeah. yeah, and of course we got a lot of alligators everywhere and crocodiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got crocodiles too. Yeah, there are crocs they're, there too. They're the same. Yeah. They're at ports as well, are they? Yeah, there's something that people brought back. Yeah, yeah, crazy, isn't it? Every yeah. once in a while we get an attack. Somebody gets killed by oh. an alligator. Yeah, and yeah. of course we got sharks. They they call Florida the Australia of the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but the beaches are lovely, aren't they? Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah, you should you should buy a uh, a house down here and become a you know like a snowbird, I guess. Yeah, that's you know? a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to sell a lot more albums. Let's get on sell some albums. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to promote the hell out of the album because it's. I gave it five stars. I think it's a great oh, album. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much. The, the rest of your albums, I just want to mention Sign of the Crow, which was another album I loved. Um, yeah. Water on the Flame, absolute favorite song. Yeah. Um, you know, what a great album. And you you wrote that one with uh, Richard Palmer, right? Richard yes, Palmer James. Right. Yeah. And Ginian, of course, is yeah. doing, again, the vocals. Yes, that's that right. Album. Yeah. No, absolutely very, very great album. album. Yes. Actually, yep. we're out of stock. I've got to do something about it. I'm very bad at. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I've got to make some more. <laughs> <laughs> it's been out of stock for about two years. I think. Oh my gosh! That, and I just didn't do anything about it. I had other things on my mind. I just couldn't do it. The other one, uh, um, crossing the tracks, which we talked about on the last time we, yeah. you know, did the show together. Um, you know, into the oblique. One of my favorites, right. um, Kalahari Fantasy, which we talked about before. And then, of course, you got White Bird on there, you know, yeah. the Beautiful Day cover. And you got a Buffalo Springfield cover as well, for yes. what it's worth. Um, the thing I wanted to mention again on that album, you had a very famous Israeli singer on that album. Uh, is it Afra Haza, right? W which right. Yeah. they used to call her the Israeli Madonna. Right. That was how, how. How did you get her on the album? Well, I didn't. It was all done by the producer, really. I, huh. I, I just sat here and and everything, and he just picked these wonderful things and sent them all over to me and just said, "Play on that." <laughs> so I did. She was huge. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Yes, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how he managed to achieve that. But yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That was incredible. 
she's done she's, uh, unfortunately she died young um yeah. which is a real shame because she was an you know the incredible singer a legend for sure yeah yeah, yeah. well we need you to promote this album which means you yeah. need to go on tour. So I yeah. do see you got some Poland dates in February next year. Yeah. And we're coming to the States in. Uh, yes. So- yes. Yes. I'd love to hear that. Starting, going to be starting in Quebec. Um, and we'll do September. We'll do about four and a half weeks in, down the East Coast. Then we'll be back in 2025 to do the West Coast. Good. Maybe some more later in 2025. So when are you going to announce those dates in the states? Um, well, as soon, as soon as they get firmed up, I mean, we've right, we've you know, there's definitely a plan there, and we've got some, we've firmed up a couple of um, you know, bigger dates, and we're going to just going to join the dots now. It's being done or being done by Moon June Records. Uh, Leonardo Pavkovich is is putting it together. He, he, awesome. he, he, the, um, the, the stick mentor that I did in South America. Mm-hmm. He, that together and and, and some uh, gigs and concerts in Japan that we did as well. So he's 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 on he's on this and it'll happen. Well, tell him to include Florida for sure. Of course. Because <laughs> since I'm promoting this album, I want to see it live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome, man. David, here's your final question. And I've asked you this before, but I get some really interesting answers. Okay. If you had a field of dreams, wish to perform with, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? I think, can I, can I expand the choice? It could be a whole band. <laughs> can I expand it from past or present? Yeah. Definitely. I'd really like to play with somebody who's making wonderful music a hundred years from now. Okay. Because I, I really want to know where music's going. Um, you know, I'm fascinated by the way that music kind of evolves over time. Mm-hmm. And we've, we're going through a particularly, you know, interesting period at the moment where we're kind of all aware of all the different musics around the world. What's kind of, missing at the moment is that that sort of unifying factor you know that that genius mind Mm -hmm. that can see what's common to all these things and somehow bring out the elements and make a kind of music that works for everybody right kind of world and so i want to know what mr or mrs or miss genius composer pop star whatever it is is happening in a hundred years from now so hmm. that would be interesting my, that would be my choice really it would be a time machine nip forwards and then come back and get on top of it and get ahead of them <laughs> <laughs> well i hope it'll be different <laughs> and not the same stuff yes, that hope, we hear now i hope it'll be different i'm sure it will <laughs> I mean, one of the things I learned from this out doing the Ice Blue Silver Sky is that the music just gets on with it. You know, yeah. the, pe- the people, you know, are just just a vehicle, really. Somehow the music self-determines and self-propagates right. and, and has energy and flow and, you know, life. And the music will survive and the music will change mm-hmm. and the music will work. So in a way, it's not about meeting the genius um, composer. It's about uh, seeing where music decides it's going in a hundred years time. That's a great answer. And that's the first one like that I've ever had on the show. Makes sense. I never, I've never said it before. Right? It's, just, <laughs> it's just a stimulating question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Makes you think. I say last time, Beethoven. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get I get that once in a while. The number one answer I always get is Paul McCartney. <laughs> is it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I yeah. I can see why. Okay. David, what's next? I mean, you, you got touring well, plans. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm kind of in a. I have bits of paper of <laughs> my. You know, I've been not sure at all, but I got you know. Um, this has been like this is all about the tempest. That's been lying on my desk here for 
two or three years, I think, and I've got, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got a kind of version of the Tempest here. Now, what, right. what that's all about, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've got that. I've got me doing um, solo violin stuff. I've got me kind of uh, acting and talking into the microphone and whispering like, like ASMR stuff. I've got, I've got all kinds of things down there, and nothing is really kind of. <clears throat> I want to do something new, basically. Right, sure. Uh, and I'm just not entertaining myself at the moment. I just seem to get a bit of this and a bit of that, and it's kind of a bit all over the place. So um, I, I need to pull it together. So I don't know what's going to be new, really. I seem to have a lot of options. Um, I, have, I, have, well, I have, yeah, I do have something that's not far away, which is kind of, yeah, which, is, which I've just kind of... I, being the editor of, but I can't remember when I started that. Maybe I talked about it before. It's about um, about uh, quantum mechanics, music and quantum mechanics. Did I talk about that before? I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember well, I that. Well, I have yeah. got it. I've asked you know, various composers and um, that I know, just friends and composers that I know, to just take an aspect of quantum theory hmm. and, and try and interpret it through music and you know i've got some very interesting results from that um so that's so that's probably not too far away from being released um i could probably pull that together maybe that's going to be the next that's interesting thing. Yeah. yeah yeah very interesting so that that might be the next thing we talk about maybe. very cool well <laughs> I do want to say very special thanks to the great Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview with David. You can purchase Ice Blues Silver Sky, which I love that title. It's great. Um, available now everywhere. Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Cherry Red Records, I guess. Yep. It's a great album. Five stars. Uh, visit David on his official website, David Cross Band. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. Touring next year in Poland first and very soon near a town near you. That's right. <laughs> David, it's it's been wonderful to see you again. Um, you. you have an open invitation to be on the show anytime you got a new project going on. Cause Thank you very much. So it's lovely to talk to you. And you. And uh, my best to you, and have a very happy holiday to, for, to you and the family. And you. Yeah, and, and you enjoy it. All, All right, David. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you.